All right. Welcome. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the inaugural, the first Counter-Strike Silver Elite, but highly offensive live stream. Welcome. I'm going to be your host, Jason Cardinal Power for this evening, and we're going to see what I hope is some top tier Counter-Strike Global Offensive. You heard it here first, guys. There is going to be some fantastic games, some fantastic frags, memorable moments, you name it, you know it. It's all happening here. It's all happening live. Welcome. How is everybody keeping this evening? Are we all good? Are we all good? I see I've made a bit of an upgrade. We made a bit of an upgrade. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. You know, I got the contractors in this morning. Uh, we had a few things to work out, obviously, the lighting and the stage, uh, you know, etc, etc. But we got it all done in the end. No problems at all. We're doing it live here for the stream. And I'm glad you're all here to join me. I'm glad you're all here to join me this evening. So, without further ado, without further ado, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope everybody has a drink, something to eat, something to do. I don't mind. It's up to you. But we're going to be getting into things very, very shortly. Just before we start, we are going to be doing a little bit of analysis on the teams that are going to be playing here tonight. And I got to say... It's shaping up to be a fantastic match. What else can I say? What else can I say? We're here at the opening night of, as I said, the Counter-Strike Silver Elite Highly Offensive Grand Final. Open and map, open and round. Guys, you don't want to miss this. You do not want to miss this, okay? Trust me. Trust me on this one. So, who we got here? Well, we've got our star lineup, of course, the favourites. The team that all the punters have the money on. Have the money on. So, I mean, who are they? That's the real question, isn't it? Who are they? So, here joining me on the panel, I've got no one. And I've got no one. I'm doing it all here myself this evening. No problem. Not an issue. Not an issue whatsoever. So, let's have a look at some of the star players. Some of the most impactful. Some of the big fraggers. Some of the feeders. We're going to have a look at them. Have a look at the stats and see what we can expect tonight. Give you a little bit of an introduction to everyone on the team and we'll go from there. How does that sound, everyone? That sound good? Sound good? Okay, perfect. Well, so, going to pull up here our first player of this evening. This is Brian Darkness Chan. You know him as the moderator from the chat. I know him as the feeder on the CT side of every map, but this is him. Hailing from the proud country of China number one. Brian is, as I've said, he is the most consistently inconsistent player on this lineup. On this lineup. And I think you'll see why in, in just a short moment. Just a short moment. So we're having a look at Brian's stats here. Let's have him up. We're going to pull him up right up on screen for you all. As you can see here, Brian, he's, he, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. He's a good player. But at the same time, you don't know whether he's going to pop off. Or you don't know whether he's just not going to turn up and fall flat. Exactly. And you can see that here from the statistics. You can see it here from the statistics live. So although he's got a lot of, a lot of experience, he's got the 1.17 rating. You know, it is above average, just barely. Um, we, we, we're going to be interested to see what Brian can bring to the table here. Brian fancies himself as an auper. I'm not sure a lot of people would agree with that. Uh, he fancies himself as a rifler. I'm not sure many people would agree with that either. He fancies himself with any other guns in the game. And I, I, I see a pattern kind of emerging here. He do, he, we're not going to really say what Brian is going to excel at. Because nobody knows. Because nobody knows. We just don't know what's going to happen. Now, the, the biggest downfall here for Darkness is that his CT sides are non-existent. Uh, he, he, he seems to have this mental block when the map loads in and it's counter-terror side that we're starting off on. He just cannot kill anyone. He just cannot kill anyone. Pushes, he dies. He holds the site, he dies. He tries to support his teammates, he gets killed instead of his teammate. I, I mean, what, what else can he do? What else can he do, you know? What else can he do? Um, so we're going to be keeping an eye on Darkness here in the matchup. Uh, seeing how he's going to progress. Is he going to turn out to be the MVP or is he going to be the LVP? Is he going to be the least valuable player on the team? Are we going to see him bottom fragging 
by the time we get to the end of the first half. Uh, the, as you can see here as well, Brian's uh, favorite team, Cloud9, did win the major recently, so he does have that boost to performance. You know, he's got that telekinetic uh, psychological advantage that some non-Cloud9 fans might not have. And that's something that we got to factor in as well. You know, we're taking it all into account here tonight. We're taking it all into account. But on the flip side, the other player that I would like to introduce you to tonight before we get underway is Dorney, Dorney, Dorney. Now, Dorney is another one of the players on this team that fancies himself as an opera. He, you know, has a small poster of uh, a Stralis player device on his table right beside him as he plays Counter-Strike. And he always gives it a, just a little kiss right before he starts playing. Now, is that going to play to his favor tonight? Or... You know, is he going to whiff more shots than Chris J when he used to opt for mouse sports? Well, you know, nobody knows. Nobody knows. And we're not going to we're not going to blame anyone tonight. You know, Dorney, he's a young guy. He's only 16. He's got that 1.01 rating uh, as rated by HLTV. These are all live statistics that you guys can see. Um, you know, we're not going to be too critical. You know, we're not going to be too critical. He doesn't have the Asian advantage that Darkness has. Uh, Dorney, coming from Ireland, my home country, myself. Uh, he doesn't have that that yellow advantage. But... You know, is he going to be able to bring to the table? He is a more consistent player, but he likes to see himself as the flashy Kenny S opera of the team, and it doesn't always pay off. You know, it doesn't always pay off. A common phrase that you will hear if you've ever been to a tournament or a land center with uh, Dorney here is, uh, dude, what the fuck? Because, you know, dude, what the fuck? Exactly. Exactly. That's the thing. So we're going to be looking out for Dorney. We're going to be looking out for Darkness, seeing what they can bring into the match here. And, you know, it, it should be it should be a good matchup. Other notable performances then coming from, we've got Kung Fu Kenny in the server. Exactly, he came all the way from America to play this game for us. Just after getting out of a gig, Kung Fu Kenny's in the server. Uh, we've got the Falcon himself is going to be making an appearance, I believe, uh, with his 3D LCD 1080p HD Sony technology. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a star lineup. It's a star lineup. You could not point to any one player on this team and say, that is the star player, because there's none of them star players. That's the thing. That's the thing. So, without further ado, without further ado, we are going to get the game underway. Uh, as far as I know, the players have all warmed up. They've all had their time to, uh, you know, try and spawn trap each other in the warm-up, as far as I know. And we are going to get underway in just a moment. If I believe. Let's have a look here. So, let's see. Let's go. Okay, just checking in on the players here. Checking in on the admin, who you may not be able to see to my rear. Is just making sure that all the equipment is set up, that all the hacks are turned off. We are playing a completely clean match here. There's no I buy power players. There is no Kellys in the server. And we're going to be getting underway in just a short moment everyone and just a short moment again i want to thank you all for coming this is jason cardinal power i'm going to be your host i'm going to be your analyst i'm going to be your commentator i'm going to be your color commentator we're doing it all guys we're doing it all we are doing it all classic technical delays exactly that's what we like to hear that's what we like to see we're doing it live we're doing it live and we're just awaiting now for the last couple of moments as the players all ready up I believe we should be almost ready to hop in game into the server and see what is going on. See what is going on. So it should be an interesting matchup. We're going to get our first match underway. Let's have a look. And the map veto has gone in favor of Inferno. Inferno. So it looks like these guys are going to fancy themselves on Inferno. Can't say that that's the most reasonable map choice that I've seen. But, at the same time, we don't know what's going to happen here. We do not know what's going to happen here. So, as we load in, guys, the warm-up is just about to finish. I've gotten the go-ahead from the admins that all the hacks are turned off, that all the skins have been put away, so there's not going to be any throwing, there's not going to be any match-fixing here. I promise you, it's all about board. Nobody has been paid off for this game. And we're going to have some good, clean Counter-Strike. Good, clean Counter-Strike. We'll say clean Counter-Strike. Let's leave the good out. Let's leave the good out. But we are going to have some absolutely fantastic games here tonight. Starting off with the very first map, 
Inferno. We're going to be getting right into it now. I'll meet you in the server. All right, guys. So we're just about to load it in. Everybody now is waiting for the broadcast to start as the players are having some technical issues to be expected, to be absolutely expected, you know, with, with these uh, online games, especially we can see already um, I've been notified by the admins in my earpiece in my earpiece here that the Falcon has had some disconnection issues already. Um, it seems that his cat Oscar has turned the PC off, um, which is unfortunate, unfortunate, of course. But um, it's not going to stop us getting underway. We're going to be we're going to be getting right into it in just a moment. Um, let's see. Okay, brilliant. Here we go. Here we go. Seems like nobody has loaded in yet. Oh, here we go. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. So we're still in the warm up. Just waiting for all the players to connect. I'm gonna have a little bit of a preview here. You guys are gonna get a chance to see. The kind of skill level that we're dealing with here. The, the the skill level that we're dealing with here, guys. You're going to see it all. We've got introduction now to the T side. We've got Danoa, who is sponsored by CS.Money. We've got Evans. We've got Casta Aros, Regisico, and Ulysses. That's going to be the guys that are fighting on the T side of this map. They're going to start on the more... Dis I want to say disadvantaged side. Uh, it, it's not as advantageous to start on the T side as it is the T side because you get to dictate the pace of the game. But what we're going to be looking at here is you want to keep an eye out here. This is the main point of this map that these players are going to be contesting, which is known as Banana for anyone who doesn't play Counter Strike regularly. Banana control is very important to establish as the T side coming up from the ramp. They want to establish Banana control so that they can dictate whether the, T, whether the CT sides need to rotate from A. Or if they're going to throw a fake, go to B, pull back, come up mid, maybe go second mid, get apartment control. So this part of the map here, Banana, is crucial. It's very, very crucial for both teams to contest um, on Inferno. On Inferno. So with that said, let us just lower the volume just a slight bit. Perfect. And it looks like we are still awaiting, looks like we are still awaiting the Falcon to join the server, the Falcon to join the server. And here we go, the Falcon is in. The Falcon has arrived. The Falcon has arrived. Uh, so, just before we get underway guys, we've only 50 seconds left before the start of this map. We've got Kung Fu Kenny, we've got Darkness, we've got Coblington, we've got the Falcon, we've got Dorney. Starting off on this CT side, hoping to set a good few points. They're looking for possibly 9, 10, 11 rounds. They're going to be looking for that advantage going on to the second half so that they can finish out the game quickly and we're not going to let it go down to the wire. Is that going to happen? Who knows? Regisico here is you know, hitting some nice frags. He's hitting some nice shots in the warm-up here. Now, again, the warm-up is not entirely dependent on the outcome of the game. And um, we all know some players can play much better when they're not under pressure, that is for sure. But it's going to be interesting to see. I'm very, very, very excited. And here we go with only five seconds left. Again, thank you to everyone for tuning in. We are going to see some absolutely fantastic Counter-Strike here. And good luck to both teams. Alright guys, so we're loading into the pistol around here. We've got... Mm, no utility so far on the T side. Actually picking up a smoke and a flashbang here. Um, it looks like the CTs are just going to go for complete body armor. Darkness actually uh, opting for the P2000 over the USP. Interesting choice here, but uh, he's going to come into a contact play mid if he catches that nade on the face. Yes, he gets taken down. Coblington and Dorney, they're going to take on the banana control. Like I said, that's going to be heavily contested, but the Falcon is just going to hold mid. He's going to look out for information, see if the T's are going to push up through the mid. Um, but it seems to be quite so far... The T side has maintained this mid control. They've opted to go away from Banana, which is an interesting play here. But um, it looks like some of the utility is going to be used up here. Now Regisico. Going to push through mid. And Falcon nearly takes him down through the smoke. He doesn't know he got tagged up there. That could have been detrimental. Regisico has got the bomb. But it looks like... 
CTs have read this one correctly. Yes, Kung Fu Kenny is going to take on on the bomb side. He gets the gets Rajasiko, takes him down. But Danoa with the P250 here. From Pit, is it going to be enough? Here comes the second smoke grenade. So now the T's are out of utility. Dorney's flanking around here. Looks like the CTs are going to wrap around. Here comes the frags. Dorney takes down Dmitry Petrenko. Kung Fu Kenny's going to push into the site. Is it going to be enough? Is he going to be able to take him down? Yes, he does. The T side gets fallen. So it looks like the pistol round is going to go over to the CTs here. Fantastic start off. And it looks like we're going to be investing into the SMGs. Darkness opting for a scout. Looks like he's probably going to try hold mid uh, with that scout taking those long range engagements. But as we know on Inferno, the T's can get right up in your face very, very quickly using that utility. Um, but unfortunately, they've opted for a what looks like a force buy here, actually. Strangely enough, from the T side, they've gone for the Deagles. They've gone for the... CZs, but Darkness with the headshot in mid, Dorney getting that bonus money. But Danoa's having none of that, he takes down Cobblington with the 1D. The Falcon's gonna go for the spray down, drops the bomb, that should be the round over. But Danoa again, he's having none of this. He's gonna take him on, is Kung Fu Kenny gonna get taken down? No, he's not having none of that now, that's what we want to see from the CT sides here. Shouldn't have dropped those two players, but at the same time, you gotta commend Danoa for... The accuracy there, going straight for the kills, which is not a bad thing altogether. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to save any weapons because he got take he got taken down by Kung Fu Kenny. But looks like the CT side here is just gonna focus on farming up a little bit of cash. We've got the two MP9s. Darkness gonna go for the nade, but gets double naded himself. He's tagged down very low. Danoa's gonna go for the boost into apartments here. Is this not gonna go? It's gonna go unchecked. Looks like the CTs are just gonna fall back. Dorney now pushing that banana. He's gonna get aggressive, but he's gonna get taken on by two players at once. Is it gonna be enough, actually? He's gonna go for that deagle, but he can't seem to land the shot. Kung Fu Kenny just holding balcony area. And the T's are kind of boxed in here. They can't push up. Darkness takes down Regisico here. Lovely shot there from Darkness. Getting double peek now as they attempt to pull out. This is just this is just gonna be cleaned up. I think the T's are gonna be lucky to pick up one or two frags here, if any. Kung Fu Kenny now farming that cash. Uh, we don't wanna see Dmitry Petrenko die to the SMG, but he does anyway. Kung Fu Kenny takes him down. And it's gonna be trios to the CTs. Perfect start here for the CTs, bar that one or two deaths that they sustained. In the second round. But we're gonna see now. First gun round. For the T side here. Getting their utility. Dimitri Petrenko here. He's got the AWP. He's gonna be looking to take on. Dark Darkness here. Ooh. Pushing up T ramp now. Avance. With the questionable positioning. But Regisico is gonna take on Darkness in the middle. Oh he's not gonna go for it. Darkness takes him down. Vital frag there. Vital frag. Not quite sure what Regisico was attempting to do in that aim battle, but... I'm gonna quieten down now as Danoa. He's pushing up banana. Gets flashed. Dorney gets full flashed as well. He doesn't know he's in the sandbags position. Is Dorney gonna spot him? Smoke grenade comes out, but... As we know, players this rank, they like to push through those smokes. They like to try to catch their opponents off guard, but Dorney's not having any of it. He's playing this nice and safe. We're gonna go for the boost here now. Up onto flower pots. Holding there, helping his teammate out really nicely. And these ETs are not gonna fall for any fakes. They're not gonna take any unfavorable duels here as the T's push up banana. Looks like it's down to Dmitry Petrenko here. He's gonna go for the opener, trying to spam through the smoke. But again, the CETs are playing it safe, playing it safe. They're not going to fall for any aggression. Dimitri here seems to have a bit of an issue with that flower pot, but... Kung Fu Kenny now. Holding the bomb site. The Falcon. Lovely frag there on to Costa Aros. And still, the T's are, the T's are looking so... Disorganized here, they, they they can't seem to make up their mind of what they're gonna do. They can't break this well oiled machine that is CT side. Darkness now. Holding from library. There's only five seconds left. The T's have got no time unless they get they can't get the bomb down. This round is over. 
Very, very questionable play here now for him. The T side, Dorney even taking out Danoa just before the end of the round there, so he's not going to bring that AK into the next round. And it looks like the T's are at a bit of a loss here. They've got a strange buy going on. Kostaros has the Uzi, the MAC-10. He's going to probably try get that into apartments now, take those close range engagements, or he's going to push up Banana here. He's going to go for the rush. He's going to go for the rush. Are the CTs going to be aware that he has the MAC-10? Oh, and Dorney gets back just in time. Coblington through the smoke now, takes down Kostaros. He's going to go for the spam. Not quite landing here, but the T's are coming in fast and strong. Coblington takes down Rosico. One more. The Falcons here now to hold him back. And that's going to be it. That's going to be a shutdown. CT's not taking a single death there. That was very well played by Coblington and Dorney. Recognizing the aggression coming up, see, coming up banana. Especially all that utility that was used by the T side. And they held on to the bomb site. They held on to the B bomb site. Now, we're looking at Evons here. It looks like the T's are going to split up. It looks like they're just going to go for some frags here. Try and hurt the economy of CT's a little bit. He gets one, but he can't take down Kung Fu Kenny. He's got his number every day of the week. Evans gets taken down. And it's 5 0s to the CT's. 5 0 to the CT's. So currently now, looking at the leaderboard, Dorney and Kung Fu Kenny seem to be really excelling in their roles here, not even taking a single death so far. Their CT economy is absolutely flying. Meanwhile, on the T side of things, yeah, it's not looking great. It's really, really not looking great. But going into the sixth round now, Dark X is going to go for the peak mid, takes down Kostaros. T's are already down one man, but... Announced to Cobblington and Dorney, they're barreling up the mid, they're barreling up Banana. Coblington takes down one. He's going to get the third, second. Yes, he does. Bombs dropped. Going to take down Danoa. These are easy frags here for Coblington. He's not going to miss these shots. I agree. I agree. Exactly. I agree too. Kung Fu Kenny. Patient as ever. Holding on to this balcony position now just for any lurkers that might have been trying to come and catch the rotate off guard. But unfortunately for Dmitry Petrenko with just his Glock, this is not looking like a very likely round. Only a matter of time now before he gets picked up by one of these CTs. Pushing and pushing, they're trying to find him. Don't want to let him away with absolutely anything this game. And that's it, the Falcon's going to take him down. Very, very impressive play here from the CT side. I have to say, they are looking absolutely amazing. They're on form at the moment. Uh, there was a lot of people, especially in the forums, that were worried about this team going into this match. You know, they, they've been on shaky ground recently. Not a lot of big performances been put forward. But I think they've successfully crammed all those uh, worries and issues that people have had. They're looking very, very strong. Although that was a questionable flashbang. Dorney, though, threw the dust off the nade. He's going to take down Dimitri. Absolutely brilliant. Dorney again going for the aggressive peak here. Against three and he takes down the third. Dorney with a 3k here. He's telling those T's. Get away from the top of banana. And the fourth he's taking them all on tonight. He is going to push down Dorney. The absolute madman. The absolute disrespect here. Moving forward now. Lovely 4k there from Dorney. Shutting that T-side aggression down as soon as they come towards Banana. He was having absolutely none of it. Absolutely none of it. Brilliant. Even getting the casual report in the chat. Absolutely fantastic play there from Dorney. I have to say, take my hat off. Alright, so coming now into round 8. It's really looking quite worrisome here for the T-side. Dorney again holding this. He's, Costa's not going to find him. Oh, Dorney with the flick shot. Lovely there. Taking out the 4 HP, but just enough to hang on. Again. The Falcon now. He's going to hold down the middle of the map. Inferno. 
Coblington now as well. He's gonna he's gonna support his teammate. Bomb carrier is coming up, but that's gonna be it. Takes him down. Fantastic play here from the CT side. The T's just don't have an answer. They do not have an answer. Anything they've tried, banana aggression, taking it slow, trying to hold apartments, smoking off top mid, trying to establish apartments control. Anything they've tried has just gotten instantly shut down. And that's gonna be the key to winning this map here for the CTs. The T side, they look like they're relying on a lot of individual play, a lot of individual skill. But unfortunately here, the well-oiled machine that is the CTs is not gonna be enough. Now, Darkness does get taken down by Costa Arus. Going for that aggressive peak in the mid. I'm not really sure that was required. But now here comes the banana aggression again. Dimitri Petrenko is going to take down Coblington. And all of a sudden, this round is in the hands of the T's. Dorney, though, up on the balcony, up on the coffin area, I should say. Going to switch over now to new box, to triple. Trying to switch up his position here so he doesn't get found out. And it looks like the T's have been stopped in their tracks, although... Noah has actually pushed into the balcony area uncontested. Gonna flash himself out. Gonna go for the aggressive peak here. Dimitri Petrenko takes down the Falcon. Kung Fu Kenny now trades the kill off. Lovely. Bomb is gonna go down on the A bomb site. And now we're in a two on three retake situation. This is the first time that the CTs have been contested this round. Half. It's going to be interesting to see here. Kung Fu Kenny going for the spray down. But now it's all on Dorney's shoulders. Can he keep his team's flawless record? And it looks like he's just going to save. It looks like he's just going to go for the exit frags. Forgets to click his mouse. Unusual display there from Dorney. Usually he's quite on point with the whole clicking the mouse. He's going to go for these aggressive peaks here. And it looks like he's just going to try to fall off. They're taken down to 9 HP but he's going to get away. The T's are chasing him down. He's going to go for the flick. Yes, takes down Costaros, bringing him with him into the next round. Just going to be enough there to hang on to the up. But I have to say, this CT economy does not look like it can be broken anytime soon. Looking at Evans, looking at Costa, looking at Regisico, all on one frag each. It's really, really not looking good for the T side here. That was their round. That was their round. They took the bomb site. Lovely bit of aggression coming up banana here. But they just don't seem to have an answer to Dorney. Dorney, he's going to take down Danoa again. Dorney is the king of banana this game. Kung Fu Kenny getting aggressive in the apartments. He's going to take down Costa. Dimitri now, he's trying to trade a kill. He's trying to find Kung Fu Kenny. Hopefully now they've relayed the information that he hasn't dealt any damage to Kung Fu Kenny. But that might not be the case considering what we saw in all chat earlier. Gonna go for a bit of a spam here through the smoke. Goblin just holding passively on top of Banana. He's been entrusted with an entire half to match himself because his teammates believe in him. The Falcon is gonna take down Dimitri as he pushes out mid with no utility. And now we're in a 2 on 4 situation. There has been a lot of damage dealt to the CTs here. But unless Evans comes big, goes big and finds some absolutely instrumental frags. He's gonna go for the cheeky flash, actually. Off the chimney. Trying to bait out some shots here, and he does. But unknowns to him, there's three players on the A-bomb site. And he's got the bomb. If he gets taken down here, this round is all but over. His teammate now, Regisico, he's gonna get aggressive. Trying to find his open and kill. There's only 20 seconds left. They've gotta do something. And here comes Evans now. He's trying to push out. Takes down Kung Fu Kenny. But is he aware of the two players in library? Regisico with the lovely kill onto Dorney. Finally destroys that flawless record. And he takes down the Falcon as well. Regisico's turning up big in this round. Looks like. And he takes down Coblington as well. Absolutely fantastic play there from Regisico. He really stepped up big. And... Terrorist timeout. Looks like the terrorists have taken a timeout. They're gonna try break this momentum of the CTs now. That's the second round they've won. They could still have the potential to have a good score going into the second half. Now, the economy on the other side is not very flush for the T's. They are under a lot of pressure here, money-wise, to make sure that they've got all the utility they need. Uh, you know, all the answers to Dorney and the rest of the CT side. Now, again... 
what I pointed out earlier is that we are seeing darkness here. He's not having much of an impact. And that could be something that this T-side can, um, how should I say, exploit. You know, I, I know he's I know he's Chinese, but it, it, they could exploit him in the sense that, you know, it, it's obvious on this CT side here that he's not going to have much of an impact. And if the T's can exploit that by finding him, abusing the fact that he's not comfortable on this CT side, they might have a way back into this half. That could be the answer for the T's, but are they going to realize it? Are they going to have the communication? Are they going to have the utility? Are they going to have the teamwork to pull it off? Well, that's what we're going to have to see answered here after this timeout ends. We're going to be right back into round 11. And Costa making some questionable decisions here. He's going to kill the chicken. Cut the tape before we see anything we don't want to see. The delinquent duo now top of Banana, Cobblington and Dorney. Just going to hold passively here. On the B bomb site, Dorney looking for the aggressive peaks here. Bit of a wiggle there. Oh, and here comes the frag grenade taking down 20 HP. And it looks like they're going to get blocked off. They might get caught out in the open here. But the T's pushing up. Evans takes down Darkness there. Lovely frag by him. And now that really opens up the map here. Costa's looking to go through this smoke with the P90. I think he fancies it. But is he going to get flashed in by his teammates here? Genoa going to go for a little bit of a spray. The Molotov is bloomed. But here comes the rotation. Here comes the rotation hard and fast. The Falcon is on his way. Wings flapping a mile a minute. And now... Coblington takes down Costa. We're in a 4 on 4 situation. The Falcon taken down. Rajasiko takes out. Coblington blows his head off his shoulders. Lovely frag there. Now Kung Fu Kenny has sprung. He's going to come. Try and support his teammates here. But we've still, unfortunately, got Dmitry Petrenko in the spawn area. Uh, I'm not sure how that works into their strategy here. Uh, maybe they know something that we don't know. Uh, but uh, currently, it seems like there's not much he's contributing to the team. Now, Kung Fu Kenny has gone back to a bomb site, thinking that there might be a possible rotate coming in, but it doesn't look like it. Here comes Evans. He's going to be the entry fragger for this. He's trying to get up high, get over the smoke. But Dorney... Clinical as ever. Takes him out. Rajasiko still with the bomb. He's going to get taken down. He's not bringing that AWP. Dmitry Petrenko decides to come back in. That strategy there, very, very questionable. But again, like I said, maybe there is a possibility that the T-side knows something that I don't know here at the caster desk. But unfortunately, it didn't seem to pay off for them in that round. And... Going into round 12, it's looking even more grim for the C for the T-side now. Their economy has been broken once again after that short string of success that they've had. Dorney there, balling out of control with 10k in the bank. He doesn't even want to buy a defuse kit because he says that they're not even going to get close to my bomb site. And now, Costa with the P250 is going to get up close, actually. The Falcon takes down Danoa. Rajasiko's crowded in, but he takes down Darkness and the Falcon. Picks up the AWP. Is he going to get the third? Yes, he is. Takes down Coblington. And all of a sudden here, this round is wide open. Rajasiko, he's going to go for the ace. Holding this angle here. He's very worried. I'm going to push slowly onto the A bomb site now. All he has to do... Is find the frags, but it's not going to happen. Kung Fu Kenny, it looks like he read that like a book. The communication there was very clear from the CTs. They communicated to each other that the last, the last T alive, Rajasiko, he was low on HP. They didn't want to risk the 1v1 AM duel with Dorney and the AWP. That's anyone's game. Funnel, stepping up here big, Kung Fu Kenny. He's going to take him down. Rajasiko again. Getting aggressive in the mid. Pasta takes down Dorney though. And Petrenko. Kung Fu Kenny's been taken out of the map. And all of a sudden now. This is looking like a very expensive round for the CT side. Hoblington's going to push up Banana. He's going to take one frag. Rajasiko gets taken down by the Falcon. And Costa. Must have heard a really funny joke there. Because he's laughing quite a lot. 
and having a look here at Dmitry Drinker, he's got the bomb, so there is a possibility they might get a bomb plant out of this. There is only one player on B bomb site, and they're gonna come into contact with each other now in just a second. Is he gonna find him? They're gonna walk right into each other. Cobblington's having none of that. Cobblington's having absolutely none of that. Listomania TV has just subscribed with the 499 subscription. Thank you so much, Listomania, for the support. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Absolutely fantastic. I hope you're enjoying this stream just as much as these guys are enjoying this game. And now, another interesting strategy here coming in from the T side. It looks like they're gonna deal just a little bit of team damage. I'm not quite sure what they're aiming for here. Team frag grenades. Dark X is gonna go for the aggressive peak. It looks like another little bit of team damage here. I think these guys think they're playing Call of Duty where they might be trying to boost each other, but it doesn't look like that's gonna work here. I'll link them with the easy frag. Only pistols here on the T side apart from the one AK on Rajasiko here. Rajasiko is top fragging, but Dorney's gonna get the wall back onto Costa. Kung Fu Kenny yet again, he's gonna hold down the apartment area. And there's just no way into this game for the T's. Very, very disappointing performances here. Dorney's gonna go for the aggressive peak, but Cobblington has got his back. True sign of a teammate there. Supporting his offer. Very, very solid play from both players. Kung Fu Kenny now has had enough of this round. He's gonna hunt down Evans. Throwing smoke. And now the CTs close in. The Falcon. Gonna be first here. Finds the last player. Bomb gets dropped. Very, very, very convincing play here from the CT side. Gonna go into the last round of the half. All the money's gonna get spent on both sides. Again, looks like the morale here on the C on the T side of things is not the greatest. Not gonna be the greatest morale. But we're gonna go into the final round of the first half of the first map. Darkness again with that aggressive peak and he gets the double kill. He's completely shut down this round. Line him up. Darkness is gonna take him both on. Kung Fu Kenny there with the double himself. He's gonna take on both and get both frags. Oh, with only one to find here, there's not much of a chance. And with the 3k, going into the second half. Absolutely fantastic place play from both, from everybody on the CT side here. Dorney leading the way with 18 frags in the first half, only taking down, only being taken down, I should say, twice here in the entire first 15 rounds, only dying twice. Absolutely phenomenal play. But, again, we don't know what might happen here. We don't know what's going to happen going forward. If the T's do fluff this pistol round, we could be seeing a game on our hands, guys. We could be seeing a game on our hands. Dorney gonna go aggressive here. A little bit of utility. He's still got the smoke grenade. With the P250, he's gonna take down Rajasiko and Evans. Smoke is gonna get dropped here. Cover enough CT. The bomb is gonna go down. Kung Fu Kenny's getting that bomb down nice and quickly. Dark X is there covering off the rotate from behind. Even pushing into CT spawn here. Collington's gonna get mega aggressive. Takes down Costa Aros. And the, C and the T's win without even taking a single death. Absolutely brilliant. Just a little bit of a misclick there from Dorney actually damaging his teammate. I'm sure that definitely wasn't intentional. But unfortunately now, for the CT side. Not looking too hot here, guys. Not looking too hot. Unless they really pull something out of the bag here on the CT side. It looks like this game is going to go over to the terrorists. Dorney again leading the way with 20 frags in 17 rounds. Yvonne's going to get his CZ out. Not quite sure what they're going to try to accomplish here. Kung Fu Kenny's taking down Costa. Dimitri's going to come out with his Deagle. He's going to get full flash. Lovely bit of utility usage there. Darkness takes him down with a Mac 10 Yvonne's going to go for the tap. He does get Dorney. He does manage to get Dorney and take him down, but I really don't think that's going to be enough here. Rajasiko. And... Avon still left over on the B bomb site. The Falcon is gonna get the bomb put down on A. They're gonna set up for the afterplant situation. And 
I think the best thing going forward here now is for the CTs to try and save some weaponry if they can at all. They can save some weaponry here, bring it into the final round, possibly push it into overtime. But I don't think that's going to be enough. Rajasiko, last man standing, he's coming down banana. The T's are happy here, just to stick on this afterplant situation. Make sure there's no cheeky diffusers coming in. And even Kung Fu Kenny's going to take him down. Not quite sure what the answer is here for the CT side. They haven't got the economies prepared. They haven't got the rounds to play with. They haven't got enough time. They haven't got enough teamwork. They haven't got enough utility. There is no answer for them. Bar an extremely, extremely sloppy performance here from the T side. I think they're going to be taking this map one. I really think they're going to be taking this map one. And we're about to see here going into round 18. Potentially the final round on map point here. Some interesting strategies here coming out again. The Falcon actually picking up the Negev. He's going to put down some suppressive fire in the mid. Darkness takes down Costa now. It's a 5 versus 3. 5 versus 2 make that where Darkness takes down Evans. Dmitry Petrenko here. He is going to pick up the one frag. Make it a 2v4. But Danoa. Going to get absolutely mowed down by that huge Negev. Dorney's going to take down Dmitry Petrenko. And that is map one good games all around even getting the army machine sg drop there for cobblington with a fantastic performance 16 and 5 but what i'm going to need from you now guys jumping back on to the analyst desk what we're going to be looking at here is we need to vote for our mvp we are going to have to vote for our mvp in that game and i think it is clear who it should go to i think it's clear who we should go to so guys while you're going to vote on that mvp award so that we can assign it in just a moment, we are going to organize our post-match interview, sponsored by nobody, because we don't have any sponsors on this show. So, again, everybody get your votes into the chat for the MVP of that game, and we're going to go into the post-match interview in just a moment. MVP award... Okay, so one, one vote coming in there for Dorney popping off with the 4k on the up and banana. Definitely one of the more memorable moments in that match. Uh, it was a bit of a slaughter fest, I have to say. You know, going into the first half, the, the, the T side just really didn't have any answer to that CT solid defense. Um, Darkness there looks like he's going to vote for himself. That's a questionable vote now in the in the map there. He was the bottom fragger on the team. Like we said, we brought up in the analysis beforehand... You know, Dar Darkness really, uh, he was struggling to contribute there on that CT side. But at the same time, you got to look at it from a point of view where Dorney, Coblington, holding down that B bomb site. You got Kung Fu Kenny dominating apartment control. Did Darkness have anything to do? Did he have anything to do that game? Exactly. That's what we got to consider here, even though he was bottom fragging there. Uh, we got to vote for Cobb, vote for Kung Fu Kenny, uh, another vote for Dorney. Uh, all about Coblington there. A lovely bit of camaraderie coming out from the the delinquent duo on the banana bomb site. But I think, judging from the chat, guys, we are going to present the first ever Counter-Strike Silver Elite Highly Offensive MVP Award to Dorney. First MVP Award is going to go to Dorney for that fantastic display of skill. That fantastic display of banana control and knowing when to push, knowing when to fall back on Inferno. MVP award for that game one is going to go to Dorney. So, with that said, we are going to go straight into the post-match interview with our newly crowned MVP. So, let's see. Is he still available? Here we go. Let's have a look right now. Going to pop in and let's see. Looks like we're going to get him. Unfortunately, guys, we do not have the technology to get uh, to get the, the star player, Dorney, on to the analyst desk yet. Um, that's coming in the future. Don't worry. We're getting that looked into. Don't worry. Doing it live. But we're going to have our interview now with, as I've said, MVP, Dorney. How are you keeping, friend? I'm good, my dude. Good, good. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. Well, congratulations on the first 
ever Counter-Strike Silver Elite Highly Offensive MVP award. That was a fantastic display of skill with the AWP there. As we said in the analysis before the game, we weren't sure really if you were going to go down the route of the AWP, where you're going to leave it up to Darkness there with the AWP because he fancies himself as an AWPer. But how do you feel that game went? Is there anything you felt you could have done better? Um, no, I felt I did pretty good. Thanks for the old uh, praise, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't me, man. It was that. It was that off. I got it off a friend before I started playing with the, the, the sticker on it. Pasha looking over me. Couldn't uh, go wrong. Uh, I see. I see. So you, you really felt that the 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 Virtus Pro, the Virtus Plow was coming out in that game, and you were just unstoppable. Yeah, like they didn't they didn't appear in the major, but they were they were here today. They were here today. Exactly. We've all got our own little Pasha biceps r right inside of us. I think. I think we all do. Um. So. Going into, going into game two now, Dorney, is there anything you're looking to improve on or do you think there's anything you could have done as a team better? Um, personally, I'm looking for zero deaths, dabs. <laughs> um, as a team, I feel I feel darkness could pull a bit more away, not going to lie. Yeah, that, that is something now that I'm sure everyone in the crowd, everyone sitting at home, is definitely going to be keeping an eye on there because it did seem like the weakest link in the team that game and although yeah, the t side didn't couldn't really show up really... until the ct side yeah, yeah exactly even. even on the t side yeah exactly uh, and al although on the ct side the the other team couldn't exploit his weakness um you know it's something that we got to keep an eye on you know because it definitely could have turned the tide of the game but thankfully it yeah, didn't exactly. in this time so with that said dorney i will let you get back to your team for your warm-up going into game two very best of luck and we will see you in the server. Alright, dude. Peace. Alright, guys. So that was our MVP for Game 1. That was Dorney. Um, congratulations again for the fantastic performance on that CT site. He was really dominant there with the AWP. With the support of his beautiful teammate, Cobblington. Keeping, making sure he was safe. Keeping the utility going. And it was a fantastic display all around. Absolutely brilliant. So, uh, with that said, we're going to be getting in to the next match in just a moment. And while we're waiting, um, if there are any viewers in the chat, any questions or anything you'd like to ask of myself or any of the players, we can relay that info to them. Um, just while we're waiting on the next map, if you've got any questions at all, fire them in the chat. Let me know. Is there anything that I've missed even? Let me have a quick look while we were loading in. Uh, let's see. Again, thank you to Listomania for the subscription. Loving the support here. Um, what's my Steam? What I will do is I will... Uh, let me see. I will grab you a link to my Steam profile if anyone is curious of what it is. Let's see now. I'll stick that in the chat because someone did ask. Hmm, let's have a look. Okay. Uh, did you know at that moment when your opponents were typing in all chat that you had the game in the bag or when did you know it was open? Um, I see, I see. Question question for Dorney there. Um, oh, I see. I knew the game was over when I killed four of them one after the other. I see, I see. Brilliant. Lovely bit of insight there from Dorney. You can really see how his mind works, you know, because he knew the game was over when the enemies were dead. Uh, fan fantastic bit of insight there, uh, I, I must admit. Um, Jason, is there any way later we can play? I've been practicing absolutely, absolutely once um, the once this inaugural stream is over. Um, once this inaugural uh, Counter-Strike Silver Elite highly offensive best of three is over, um, we can get into some viewer games for sure with anyone that wants to join in. Uh, just as I put in the chat, if you want to add me on Steam, we can get into some viewer games right after this broadcast is over. After this broadcast is over. Got time for one more. Yes, perfect. So the Falcon there letting us know that uh, we're going to be getting into the next map very, very soon, I hope. Let's have a look. Perfect. Hopefully now we're going to switch it up a bit um, and see how the map veto goes in favor um, of our star players here. Going to be a very, very interesting game too now, I hope. Oh, it looks like we're having some technical issues. Okay, so it looks like we're having a little bit of a technical issue here. 
with one of the players' PCs. It looks like he hasn't actually gotten some coal in the stove to power the PC, guys. I think that's what the issue is here at the moment. But don't worry, we will be getting right underway in just a moment. In just a moment. And again, the offer is still open while we're waiting to get into game two. If anyone does have any questions or anything they'd like to say in the chat, just let us know. And we can relay that to the players themselves. Uh, if I can't answer it myself. If I can't answer it myself. But other than that, let's see. Okay, we should be we should be getting under Reina quite quickly as far as I'm aware. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was, I have to say guys, that was a fantastic game one. Really, really solid performance there from... Dorney, really solid performance from Coblington. Actually, a really solid performance from everyone apart from Darkness. That was really what we were looking at here. Everybody held their own except Darkness. Everybody was making frags except Darkness. Everybody was, you know, playing to a very, very high level. Um, you could really see uh, a lot of, you know, interesting strategies coming from the T side. Uh, a lot of interesting tactics uh, like the, the team damage and the AFK, etc., etc., um, but unfortunately, it didn't actually, um, it didn't actually pay off for them in the end. They really couldn't seem to get any momentum going. Um, as far as I'm aware, those T side players are very, very heavily momentum based. And once Dorney was shutting them down on banana, once uh, Darkness was shutting them down in mid, etc., when the Falcon was holding down his arch area, or when Kung Fu Kenny was holding apartments, um, they really seemed to, they couldn't get going. They couldn't get going at all. They couldn't get any momentum. It was shut down. When they did finally win, you know, one to two rounds, they called the timeout. Maybe wasn't the best time for the timeout. Uh, maybe they were hopefully going to break the CT momentum, but that just didn't happen. It really, really didn't happen. And unfortunately, it lost them the map. Fortunately, it lost them the map. Um, so, please stop the roast. I hit only Kalat. Yes, that is true. That is true. One of the highlights of the match was the, uh, the, the double from Darkness in the mid. Uh, that was a beautiful shot there, but unfortunately on eco opponents, uh, not the most impressive of kills. It was a it was a lovely shot, but you know, I, I believe at that point in the game, the, the T side was broken. They were completely broken. They had lost all motivation. The morale on the team was at an all time low and it really did look like they fell flat. It was unfortunate. It was very, very unfortunate because we were hoping or a more balanced game. Hopefully we'll get that in game too. I'm very hopeful. I hope you're hopeful at home. But we're going to see now here. In just a moment. Just going to check in with the players. Uh, if there is any. Uh, update. I'm going to have a quick talk. With the admins now. From on the desk. Let's see. Okay so. Apparently we're still we're still undergoing a little bit of technical issues. Some slight technical issues. But don't worry guys. Like I said, we're doing it live. We're going to get into these games as soon as possible. We're bringing you the best, most quality content here at Cardinality TV. I hope you're all enjoying yourself. Take this opportunity now to go and grab a drink, go to the bathroom, grab some food, do whatever you got to do before we get into game two. That is my offer that I'm extending to everyone right now. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That seems to be good. So again, I'm not sure if you guys can see uh, behind me. I know the, the, the lighting on the stage at the moment is a little bit dim. But we do have our admins on stage right now in the boots with the players. They're trying to get everything fixed. They're trying to get everything sorted as quickly as is possible because we are paying them by the hour. So we don't want to pay them any more money than we need to. So with that said, we're going to be getting underway very, very shortly. Use this opportunity now for a quick break. I know there was some very high octane, very high speed, high momentum gameplay in the last map. And hopefully we're going to see more of that again. That's what I'm hoping for. Grab some more tissues for my issues. Exactly, exactly. Lemon Lover in the chat. That is what we are talking about. That is what we're talking about. Let's see now here. Okay, okay. Yeah, of course. Perfect, perfect.
Lena. Perfect. Even what we might attempt to do, guys, if possible, is we might get another mind in here for the analysis, uh, if possible, while we're waiting. But it seems like, according to the admins, according to the admins, I believe all the technical issues have been resolved. Um, it seems like some very, very strange issues actually going on down in the boots with the players. Okay, I'm not quite sure I can say that on air, but some bodily fluid left over from one of the players once they got up. Not quite sure, I can't confirm nor deny. But um, as far as I'm aware, we are almost ready to go. See? Perfect. All right. That is what I like to see in the competitive lobby here. Doing now. Perfect. That's what I like to see. All right, guys. Apologies about the delay. It wouldn't be a Counter Strike event if there wasn't any technical issues and technical delays. But I can assure you now, we're about to load in. To the next map. So looking at this now from an in-game leader point of view. As you may not be aware. Uh, it wasn't very clear from the last game. But the Falcon actually is the in-game leader here. For this dominant side. Um, so he's going to be the one that's looking at the vetoes in the map. He's going to be scouting the opponents etc etc. And we're going to be wondering now what map he's going to go for. Where we're going to be aiming for. Um, loading into this next round here. Going for game 2. Now, judging by that very, very dominant performance, um, I, pre I presume most people would look at this as being a, a very swift 2-0. But again, in the World Counter-Strike, in the world of matchmaking, Gold Nova 2 DMG rank, anything can happen. Anything can happen. The most strangest things can happen. So I'm just receiving confirmation now from the admins on the floor. It looks like we're going to be going into Train. Train is going to be our map. Number two. So we're going to get that loaded up for you guys. And then we're going to get right into the action. No delays, no pauses, no holds, no breaks. Straight in and ready to go. Admin, he is doing it sideways. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors that could make this stage, this arena... All the broadcasting equipment, all the staff that needed to be hired. I'd like to thank nobody. I'd like to thank not that company. I'd like to thank the Not Fuel company. Um, also, shout out to our broadcasting company that doesn't exist. And you know, it's been a com it's been a cumulative effort, I should say, um, to get this sorted. So we're going to be loading now in to map number two, train the veto going in the way of the Falcon. We all know Falcons like trains. And that was a clear choice. It was a clear choice. When Inferno was banned out, given their dominant performance in the last map, um, you know, the Dust 2 was always banned. Uh, Nuke, we've seen how potent that Darkness can be on Nuke when he actually gets on that T side. Um, so that's always banned out. Then coming down to Mirage, we've heard the classic take off Mirage, I fucking hate Mirage, coming in from the guys in this Superstar lineup. But... Again, going to be an interesting map. It's going to be an interesting map. Again, thank you for everyone for tuning in. I hope you are ready. I hope you're refreshed. I hope you've got something to eat, something to drink. And you're ready for some top gear Counter-Strike. All right, everybody. So we're loaded in now to train. Thank you there to Cardinal on the analyst desk for passing it over. My name is Jason Cardinal Power, and I'm going to be your commentator for this game. A uh, huge shout out to Cardinal there for the analysis and keeping everything under control while we had some technical issues. But those seem to be resolved as of word of the admins on stage. And we're going to be getting right into the action as soon as is possible. Uh, looks like now we're just waiting for the last couple of players to connect into the server. We're just missing darkness here. Come through Kenny in the warm-up. 
Gonna swing that lovely lore bayonet around. So looking forward now, it looks like we've gotten a substitute in here on the CT side. Um, and that is in the form of 464 tick. We will now refer to from now on as 64 tick. Darkness here loading into the server. Just waiting now for the last player on the T side before we get underway. And we should have a very, very, very strong opening game on our hands here, guys. Going into map number two. CT side here, especially Dorney. After his performance on last map, he's going to be hoping for the 2-0. Everyone else on the CT side is going to be hoping for the 2-0. With a fresh pair of legs in now. In the form of 64 tick. Who has played with this lineup in the past. So they're no shy. They're not shy for a bit of bread, as we would say in France. But it's going to be very interesting now see, to see how this dynamic changes up once Cobblington is gone. And we're into the map with 64 tick. So again, just waiting for the last T-side player to load in. I've received word from one of the tournament organizers actually. It looks like the last player on the T-side actually forgot to put some coal into his PC. I believe that's what's taken so long. But again, guys, with only two minutes remaining, we're going to be into this game before you know it. It's just a minute and 30 left to go. 90 seconds remaining here. We're going to be looking out for the same flaws that we found in that CT side, that dominant CT side earlier in the, in the tournament here. We are starting off on the CT side, which we know is not favorable for Darkness. He can be a bit of a liability here on the CT side, especially if the T side is able to exploit that. That is the, the, the main issue we're going to be looking at here. Looks like we've loaded in finally the Tasky. So I'm going to introduce you to our T side challengers on this next map. Best of two on train. We've got Hellboy, we've got Smiley Face, McDuffie, Lil Nuck, and Pataski, who's just loaded in. With 35 seconds to go, guys, we're going to be getting into game number two. And the arena is wide open. A lot of knife kills going on here in the warm-up. A lot of admins, a lot of doing it sideways, a lot of pushing like idiots. Hopefully we're going to see some high octane adrenaline fueled gameplay here. And with that, let's get underway for map number two. Going straight into the pistol round. Here we go. Alright, so looking at this now on the T-side lineup, it looks like we're just going to go for the armor here. Uh, nothing flashy coming out from the T-side. They're not going to go for any utility here. Kung Fu Kenny's got the smoke and the diffuser, which could prove very, very useful here. Falcon going for the nade and the smoke. Going to grab a bit of utility here. And goes for very early smoke, actually. Very strange. Questionable decision there, but Dorney coming up huge again. Gonna get taken down though by Lil Nuk. Kung Fu Kenny takes down Rispidor. Recipidor, even. Apologies for my pronunciation. And now the round has really slowed down here. Lil Nuk got that open and frag when he traded off onto Dorney. Gonna play a little bit more cautiously now. Smoke has faded on the CT side. And the Falcon hasn't actually managed to deal much damage with that grenade, but a lovely kill there from Kung Fu Kenny. Darkness gets taken up by Vitaski. Lil Nox gonna go for the plan. Kung Fu Kenny now rotating true connector. It's a two on three situation. Kung Fu Kenny takes down Lil Nox. He's taking this round into his own hands. Falcon gonna stick to defuse. Gets taken down by Pataski though. Pataski gonna get Kung Fu Kenny as well. Now it's a one on one. 64 tick. Can he find him? He hasn't got much time. He hasn't picked up the kit. 
Can he find him? He sees him. Pataski's just gonna delay time. Force 64 take takes him down. And it looks like we're just gonna have just enough time to get that defuse in. That was a very, very close round there. But luckily, it does go in favor of the CTs. Pataski coming in huge there at the end. Almost clinching it. Almost clinching it for the T side. But it just wasn't enough. Uh, 64 tick even manages to retain the diffuser there at the end of the round. But um, we really got to look forward to seeing more of Kung Fu Kenny this map. Uh, got a lovely open and pick there with the one tap. Uh, coming out middle through Ivy like a speed demon. And going into this next round now, looks like 64 Tick's gonna go for the rifle, gonna play a little bit more passively. We've got a double scout set up and one SM, two SMGs, apologies, two SMGs. That frag grenade there from Kung Fu Kenny's not gonna deal much damage, but they've let Hellboy out. They've let him out through Pop Dog. He's gonna take down Darkness there, although he does pick up the frag. The Falcon's gonna come and trade the kill off through Connector. 64 Tick. Gonna try and hold on to this rifle as much as he can. He wants to bring this into the next round, takes down Potaski with the headshot. The Falcon gonna go for the long range spray with the ump. And he manages to get McDuffie. Okay, so although that round did look like it was gonna go in favor of the T side there, it was gonna be a bit of an upset. Looks like 64 tick can turn around. He's able to keep the, the map under control. He's able to keep the round in the favor of the CTs. So it wasn't a complete disaster. Very, very good play there from the CT side. Uh, Darkness did get caught out by that pop dog push. Something that the CTs are gonna have to keep an eye on now going into these next rounds, but. Going into now the first gun round. Dasky here going glass cannon with the AWP. Uh, a little bit of team damage dealt there as well. Um, we've seen this. We've seen this tactic coming out on the T side uh, in the last map as well, and it didn't really pay off for that T side. But you know, again, like I said, these T's might know something that I don't know, and apparently the team damage is a viable strategy here. Smoke's gonna fade on ramp. 64 tick now getting aggressive to the ivy connect uh, the ivy area. Falcon Noel, he's full flashed. Dorney, he's not after him found. He's gonna hold his bullet. Yes, he does. Gets two now. Takes down little doc. The Falcon spraying through the smoke. Dorney gets taken in from Hellboy up on the heaven area. The Falcon trades that kill out nice and quickly here. And it'll be fantastic. Oh, but Pataski takes down Darkness completely unawares that he was peeking out there. Whoa, questionable flashbang there from Kung Fu Kenny, and he takes down the Falcon as well, Recipitor. Absolutely brilliant play there. And now we're in a two-on-one. This round has completely flipped on its head. The bullets raining in from 64 tick as well, so now they know where he is. 64 tick here. In the one on two. Can he find the first frag? Yes, he does. Pataski gets taken down. He's going to go for the spray, but he doesn't have enough bullets yet. Here comes the USP. He's going to go for the reload. Picks up the M4A4. He's going to go for the spray, and he runs out of bullets. Oh, my word. Recipitor takes him down with the 3K. 64 tick there. That was absolutely devastating there. First, his M4A1S runs out of bullets. Only 20 bullets in the magazine. Very unfortunate there. But even going for the quick swap onto the M4A4 on the ground and runs out of bullets in that. Only a couple of bullets in the magazine remaining. Very, very unfortunate play there. Um, I can imagine now he's going to be very, very upset with that to lose that round. The CZ's getting dropped here in this semi-eco. Kung Fu Kenny leading the leaderboard for the CT as well. Pataski with that lovely all play and the clutch from last round. Before tick, gonna get a bit aggressive here. Out Ivy. Darkness with the pop down. Into Pop Dog. Recipitor gets taken down. Pataski here. Not gonna give up Ivy control. He takes down 64 tick. Kung Fu Kenny in the bomb site. Gets one, but he can't get another. Dorney gets taken down by Hellboy. Now Kung Fu Kenny has got the UMP. He's got the chance to win this round. And now we're down to a two on one again, guys. Pataski here with the AWP. Not the best weapon you want in that kind of situation. Uh, the CTs know where the bomb is. They've got the rifles, although Darkness is very, very low. He's only on 4 HP. A gust of wind is going to take him down here, but if the CTs play this correctly, there's not much Pataski can do to get back into this round. He's going to go up onto the yellow train on the bomb train. Kung Fu Kenny now making a bit of noise. Those sound cues coming off. Pataski might be able to use this to his advantage. 
Molotov's coming out, so there's not going to be any peak coming from the heaven area. But he still needs to retrieve the bomb. Only 28 seconds left on the clock. He's got to make his move now. Going to go across. Grabs the bomb. Here it goes. He's going to go for the plant. Going to fake it out. Hard to see. He's going to fall for the bait. They're coming down from the ramp. Darkness gets taken down, but Kung Fu Kenny's having none of that. Sit down, stay humble. Tasky gets taken down. Very, very nice try there from the T side. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. If he had possibly found the frag onto Kung Fu Kenny first by catching him unawares, it could have been a different story. But Darkness there putting his sacrificial lamb on the line. Kung Fu Kenny trades the kill out. 3 1 2, the CT's here. Uh, it looks like we're going to see a. Almost a full eco here on the T side. Just the Glocks, couple of Deagles. Uh, Potaski has gone for the head armor. He's going to be the raid boss on this round. Molotov here. Could prove instrumental, but Darkness playing that E box area. Very, very well taken down, Hellboy. And now Recipidor gets taken down. The pop flash through the smoke there by 64. Take a lovely, lovely play there. Questionable smoke here from Kung Fu Kenny, but he's going to smoke off Potaski unknowingly. Coming out here, this raid boss, he's the only key for this round. Is it going to be enough? McDuffie going for a very ambitious spray there with the Glock. In that upper B area. Only gets tagged up here by Potaski. The reload's coming out. 64 tick has got nothing left in the chamber, but he takes down Potaski with the Deagle. He's getting a bit hot under the collar there for 64 tick. But thankfully... Deagle was there to back him up now, Kung Fu Kenny. They're just going to try hunt down these last two players. They just want to deny the bomb plant. That is the most important thing here for the CT side. They do not want to let the economy for the T side start rolling. Because, as we all know, on train, very, very favorable for the CT upper. But also, a lot of close angles there that can be played by the T side upper. If he's feeling confident, if he's feeling it. But Darkness, they're going to take down the last two Glock players left alive on the T side. And it's going to be another win for the CTs. We're going into round number 6 here. Unfortunately, I don't think Potaski's going to have enough money for a buy. Uh, only got the Deagle armor and a couple of nades here. Uh, Lil Knock as well, only on the Deagle. We've got two rifles here for the T-side and the one scout. Uh, Recipidor, he's going to be... He's going to be attempting to make some plays here with that scout. Hopefully find a few headshots. But we've got a very, very solid buy here on the CT side. A little bit of spray coming through the wall, but Recipitor takes down Kung Fu Kenny. This is exactly what he wanted with that scout. He's got to go for the headshots. And he takes the head clean off Kung Fu Kenny. The darkness there to trade the kill back. For his teammate. Oh, but 64 tick gets caught with a nade in his hand. Not ideal there. McDuffie comes out, takes down darkness as well. And all of a sudden, it's the Falcon left in a one on four. Is he going to go for this play, the hero play, the Falcon? He's got the defuse kit, he's got the head armor. Lilnock is very close, takes him down. Very clinical round there from the T side, I have to say. Once that open and frag came out by Recipitor with the scout. Takes the head off Kung Fu Kenny's shoulders. That round really opened up there for the T side. Got wrapped around from the Ivy position. Darkness gets taken out after 64 tick gets caught with an aid in his hand. Not the most ideal situation. So it looks like the CTs are having a little bit of communication problem here, but we're gonna go for just the force buy. Darkness gonna go for the spray here with the Deagle. Gets taken out. Potaski having none of that with the M4 he salvaged from last round. Dorney there, a lovely frag with the Deagle. Is he gonna be able to find two? He's not. McDuffie takes him down. This should be a pretty straightforward round here for the T side, although Potaski was dropped very low by Dark Excellence earlier in the round. Kung Fu Kenny manages to find Potaski there, who looks like he was trying to save his rifle. Now Kung Fu Kenny's got the M4 and the bomb still hasn't gone down. He's actually found the bomb, it's in T spawn. And now the CTs have to rotate back Kung Fu Kenny though. Fortunately, without the body armor, aim punch is just going to be a detriment. And now the T's. Although they are going to get delayed quite a bit here, going back to retrieve this bomb. Very, very solid eco round here from the ET side. Hellboy is going to cover off from outside the IV connector. Make sure there's no ETs here lurking along with Kung Fu Kenny. 
Flipping over to 64 tick. Best he can hope for now in this round is to salvage some weaponry, and that's exactly what he does. He finds the AK. Gonna go for the save here. Gonna be a long bomb timer, but I don't think the T's are gonna chase him. Just happy to get this bomb down and get another round on the board. 64 tick is actually gonna get a little bit aggressive here. Gonna hurt his legs there, gonna hurt the L ankles. They're not what they used to be now, jumping off that kind of height. Sound cue, though, thankfully doesn't give much away. Doesn't seem to be any T's nearby to be able to hear it, and it doesn't look like they're willing to push too far to find him. 64 tick with that bit of experience there, we can see the rank here, Legendary Eagle. Got the bit of experience on top of the other guys. Gonna play a little bit more passively, knowing that it's more important for him to bring this rifle into the next round than it is for him to find any exit kills. But unfortunately, McDuffie at the last moment takes him out anyway. So I just spoke there for about two minutes and that was all for nothing. But anyway now, going into round number eight, this is much more evenly map, evenly matched, I should say map, than Inferno. T's seem to have found their groove here now. Very, very back and forward between the two teams. And then we've got a full solid buy on both teams. Lots of utility, lots of rifles. 64 tick. He's going to be holding down this IV connector. Going to go for a bit of a spam through the smoke there. Not the most common practice you see with the M4A1S. But Dorney and Hellboy actually trade kills. Takes down Recipidor. Pataski with the AWP as well. Double up on T-side. Not something you see very often. Although this is Master Guardian to LEM. So, anything is possible here. We could see Jewel Beretta rush. Kung Fu Kenny on the ladder actually manages to kill Lil Nux there. One of the most difficult ways to kill someone while you're on a ladder. Potaski misses a lovely whiff there. Kung Fu Kenny's gonna flash himself out. Is Potaski gonna fall for it? Holding this E-box. Misses the AWP shot. Connell's having none of that. Takes him down, retrieves the AWP. Now it's just a 3 on 1. Hellboy has not got much of a way into this round, unfortunately. CTs know where he is. It's just a case now of slowly closing the gap. Hellboy's trying to keep himself alive, trying to find a pick. He does, though. It takes down 64 tick. Out comes the flash. Here comes. He takes down Kung Fu Kenny, and all of a sudden we're in a 1v1. The Falcon, he's going to go for the spray. Lovely there. Lovely spray. That round looked like it was just about to slip out of the CT's hand. But fantastic spray there from the Falcon. Was looking a bit shaky at the start. But he was just playing with everyone in the chat. He just wanted to make it look like he didn't know what he was doing. Manages to find the kill. Manages to salvage the round. Hellboy there liking, liking to let the enemies know that he was only on 5 HP. Which is very unfortunate for the T side there. That round was almost in the palm of their hand. Due to some lovely shots on the AWP. From Hellboy. Hellboy now pushing out. Going through Olaf. Actually takes down Darkness, but Kung Fu Kenny trades that out straight away. 64 tick, takes down McDuffie. He's gonna get a second one. Dropped very, very low. Smoke. Having to smoke himself in here now. Even a HE or a frag grenade, anything is gonna take him out of gust of wind. Is he gonna find a kill? He does, though. That's, see, that's where the experience comes in. That's where the experience comes in. He got that lovely pre-fire there. On to Recipitor. And that's gonna be enough to take him out. On one HP, though, he's gotta be very careful. Thankfully, now we're in a four-on-two situation here. Little Nox gonna play aggressive. Coming down with the huge up kill onto Dorney. The flick shot into the corner. Dorney wasn't expecting that. Admin, he is doing it sideways for sure. Kung Fu Kenny's gonna get the spray down on Potaski. Now it's a three-on-one. And the Falcon takes down Little Nox. Fantastic bit of individual performance there from Little Nox coming out. He was having none of Dorney in that corner. Takes him out with a swift up shot. But unfortunately... Given the time left in the round, given the amount of players left on both sides, it just wasn't enough to get them the round. We can attribute that to some of 64 ticks. Beautiful play there. Out, pushed through Ivy when he was popping the smoke. Keeping himself alive on 1 HP, even finding the second frag. But it doesn't look like it was going to be enough to win the round there, although it was a fantastic off shot from Lil Nook. 6-3 now to the terrorists, or to the counter-terrorists, apologies. Going into round number 10. And it's very, very evenly matched here. Could go either way. Uh, the Zeus even coming out from Lilnok here. It's going to be interesting to see what he's looking to do. Hellboy's pushing out very, very aggressive into Olaf. Catches one. Oh, he takes the head off Kung Fu Kenny. Lovely shot there. He's going to find a second kill onto 64 tick as well. 
this aggressive play here is catching Kung Fu Kenny off guard very, very often. Not something you see happen now. He's very, he's usually a very collective and calm player. But he can't handle this aggression from Hellboy. And now, the bomb goes down for the tease. And we're all of a sudden in a two on four. Falcon here. Pushing up Ivy. He's going to find one. McDuffie misses the op shot. The Zeus coming out from Lil Knock is not going to be enough. Now we're in a two on two. Hellboy's very low. Precipitor takes down Dorney though. It's all on the Falcon. Goes for the spray. Takes down Hellboy. Brilliant frag there. Now, one on one. Falcon, he's only got 16 HP. It's against the scout of Recipitor. Flashbang comes out. He's going to try stick this defuse. But unfortunately there, Recipitor plays him like a book. And that round is going to go to the T's. We were in a 4 on 2 in favour of the T side there. Brought it down to a 1 on 1 and nail biter there at the very end. T's almost let that one slip away. But you guys can see here, this is very back and forth action. It's anyone's game. 6-4 now to the CTs, but I can't say it's been a dominant performance from either side. Looking at the scoreboard now, Kung Fu Kenny really is after coming alive in these last few rounds. Although he's been getting taken down by Hellboy with that aggression through Olaf. He has been finding frags. Dark Exons takes down Hellboy there. Going for the aggressive. Pop Dog Push. Petaski gets taken down as well. And now the Falcon. He's going to drop down. He's going to go for the knife kill, but... <laughs> Little knock, here's the sound cue. Very cheeky play there from the Falcon. In classic Falcon fashion. Darkness here. Picks up another frag. Padding his stats. And I gotta say, we gotta give credit where credit due. Now, Darkness is contributing a lot on this CT side. It was very questionable. All the hunters were wondering, was he gonna show up on this CT side? A lot of bets were placed. A lot of bets could have been lost now due to Darkness's performance here. And ironically enough, it's actually Dorney that isn't performing as well as we would have hoped given his extremely dominant performance on Inferno. But looking at the scoreboard now, kills spread quite evenly across the scoreboard for the CT side, even more so for the T side. We've got Hellboy with his aggressive pushes. He is picking up a lot of frags, but unfortunately he's dying very quickly as well, which it might be a detriment to his team finding those open and entry frags. is always very important, but not if your team can't follow up on them. And it seems like he is going, for lack of a better term, too fast. Kung Fu Kenny now. Takes down Recipitor, but Hellboy, he seems to have Kung Fu Kenny's round. He's got Kung Fu Kenny's number every round. Now Potaski there taking out Dorney, who was caught unawares. But Darkness going to trade off that kill. He hears the bomb going down. Gets the second kill. Now there's only one more. It's a three on one. Lil Knock here. Gets taken out by 64 tick. The double up setup on the CT side is just proven to be a little bit too strong here. But hopefully... T's don't let this slip away from them. We're gonna be going into round 13. It's gonna be 8-4 to the, the CT side. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how they approach this round. The economy is not very flush on the T side. They've been dying a lot. They've been losing a lot of close rounds. Even the rounds they have won have been down to the wire. But in contrast, on the CT side, they've got a lot of money in the bank. A lot of padding. That they can dip into if they are losing a couple of players each round, which they have been. But that's absolutely fine. Darkness here. Gonna go for the aggressive peak. Takes down Recipitor. He has that shot every day of the week. No problems. No worries at all. Dorney gonna smoke off now. Playing a little bit more defensive. Potaski gets caught in the Molotov, but he's gonna come out. Fortunately, now, it's not gonna be enough. He doesn't get taken down either side, but he's in a very tricky situation here now. Potaski with the Molotov. That comes out. McDuffie takes down Darkness and force it. 64 tick. Takes down McDuffie. Kung Fu Kenny with the wraparound from behind. Brilliant bit of play there. Hellboy gets taken out by the Falcon. And another round going in favor of the CTs here. And this is what I said earlier. We don't want the T side to let this slip away from them. Because as we know, Train can be a very CT sided map, especially with that double up setup. So hopefully now we're going to be looking forward to some aggressive T play again. Get Hellboy out onto the side. Get his teammates behind him to be able to plant the bomb. Take the rounds nice and fast. And Hellboy's going to be searching. He's going to be gunning for Kung Fu Kenny. Darkness again with the aggressive peak. He spots one going towards Olaf. He's going to call that out for his teammates. But it can't hit the shot. 
Precipitor are now pushing the opposite direction, actually, but 64 tick takes him down from the top of the green train. Kung Fu Kenny sees the player wrapping around. Dropping down, Hellboy takes him out with that super aggressive playstyle yet again. And now, Tasky gets taken down. We're in a 5 on 1. A little bit of team damage coming out. But Darkness has a little Nox number there. Perfect play. Not dropping a single player. Lil Nook has been disconnected, so there might be a little bit of a pause here coming in. For the T side. But going into the last round of the first half, we've got two AK so far. Hellboy with a lot of money. He's going to possibly drop for his teammates. Here come the vote, though, but it's a little bit too late. So we're not going to see any pause here. Very questionable decision. Hellboy does go back and buys. He picks up the AK and the utility. But we've got a bot now on the T side. Darkness takes down Recipidor after he kills Kung Fu Kenny. Gets caught with the Molotov in his hand now. That's not a position he wants to be in. Fortunately, it is only the bot with the bomb. Which has been dropped in a favorable position now for the CTs. Vitaski. He's going to get up on top of the bomb train. Finds the kill onto Darkness. We're looking at a tree on two situation now. The bot is dead. The Falcon with a lovely frag there gets caught with a flash in his hand. But he isn't taken down. Tasky there. Questionable Molotov. Molotov and where his teammate just came from. Can't be too safe. Hellboy. He's got the up. And now it's all on the Falcon's shoulders. He's got to find these frags here. Doesn't know where the players are. Gonna go for the steady peek here, hoping to see if any of the T's will get aggressive. Hellboy, they know he's aggressive, they know he likes to push. But here comes the flashbang. He's got the he's got the defuse kit, he can't find any of these players, and Hellboy takes him down. That aggressive play there was expected of him. But just goes to show he uses his intelligence there to sit back, let the T CTs know that he is gonna play aggressive, and then he sits back, lets them walk into his crosshair. That's very, very well played there. Or the B side. Okay, so getting into the next round. Next half, I should say. Apologies, apologies. We're going to have a little bit of a tactical time out here. Some discussion coming in on the CT side now. They know the importance of this pistol round. This pistol round is absolutely paramount to them still having a chance at winning this game. Uh, if, this, if the pistol round does go in favor of the, C, of the T side here, we could be looking at possibly a 13-5 scoreline before we get into the next gun round. Which might not be enough rounds on the board for the CTs here to be able to come back into this in a convincing way. Looking forward now. A couple of seconds left in this timeout. At the buys. Going to be straight up armor on everybody on the CT side. Kung Fu Kenny. It's got the Molotov and the smoke, so it looks like they're going to be pushing towards a B push, trying to hold off the defuse with that Molotov if all goes to plan. Dorney as well with the smoke and the flash. The Falcon here, he's not going to spend any money, neither is 64 tick. They're still weighing up what they want to buy. But the Falcon and Dorney now, they really need to start pulling their socks up here. And we're going to get into the pistol round. Hellboy, he's going to be holding upper on the B-bomb site. He's going to come into a contact play here. Four enemies. He spots them all. He's going to relay that info. McDuffie's falling back already. He knows he got to stay alive. he got to stay alive. Hellboy gets taken down. Lovely frag there from Dorney. The Falcon's going to push out. The smoke comes out. Lovely frag there again by the Falcon. McDuffie gets taken down. The bomb is trying to go down. The wraparound though is coming from behind. Are they going to notice it in time? 64 tick. Lovely frag there. It's all down to Little Nook now. 1 versus 4. He's got to get the ace to win the round for his team. The Falcon. He's going to get taken down. But no. He flicks around. Lovely Glock play there from the Falcon. Unstoppable. 5 hits. Exactly. Potaski can't believe it. He's so confused there. How he didn't get taken down. A little bit of trash talk coming out on either side. Very rude there from the Falcon, but as in typical Falcon fashion, he does not care. He does not care. He's fired up after that last round there, especially that last long-range Glock kill, where he should have been killed. Hellboy, he's going to hold passive. They know they've got a couple of rounds to play with here, so they're not going to get too aggressive. There is the Deagle, which gets taken out, just as I say it. The head armor's still on Potaski with the 5.7. That can be deadly at close range. If he can hold these 
Close angles. Kung Fu Kenny's gonna take down McDuffie. Tasky here. His best hope is to find the frag and save a rifle. But given the situation now, he's in a 1 versus 5 situation. He doesn't want to feed money to these SMG kills. He doesn't want to take a long range engagement against these AKs. He's going to go for the exit frags as far as I can tell. A little bit of spam coming out here from the T side. But... Looks like we're going to be going to 12-5 to the terrorists. Spots one. Spots two. He's not going for the sound cue. There comes two. He manages to pick up two. Can he bring a rifle into the next round? Gets the Mac 10 Thankfully, it's only a Mac 10 Very sloppy play there from the T's. But you have to say... Absolutely brilliant play there from Potaski. He held the perfect angle. He had the armor, so he didn't need to worry about the bomb explosion. He catches two players with their pants around their ankles. And that shouldn't be happening at this level of play. Or actually, it should. But that's going to get him fired up now. He's bringing the armor and the helmet into the next round as well. Economy's slightly hurt there. 64 ticks got an MP7. Questionable purchase. The Falcon takes him out. Lil Nock and Precipitor gone. Kung Fu Kenny deletes him out of the map. Tasky's gonna play a little bit aggressive now. He's coming down Pop Dog. Is he gonna hear the bomb going down? Five on three. Darkness takes down Hellboy. The Falcon takes down Potaski. We're in a five on one yet again. Very similar situation to last round. Kung Fu Kenny's just gonna farm up that money. Dollar bills in the bank. Dollar bills in the bank, and that's what matters at the end of the day. 13-5 now to the T side. And it's not looking great for the CTs. This is going to be their first gun round. They've got the single op set up. They've got the rifles and the utility as much as they can afford. Kung Fu Kenny balling out of control here. Sticking with the MAC-10. He does not give any care to what these CTs think. Any care to what these CTs have in store for them. Here comes the aggressive push from Lil Nock, but McDuffie takes down Darkness on the refrag. Potaski as well takes down Dorney coming out Ivy. E-box. McDuffie's taken out by the Falcon. But now we're in a three on three. And although the T's have made a little bit of headway onto the A-bomb site, there is a huge flank coming in here from... T-side. Has he heard him? Has Hellboy heard him? It's gonna peek out. The timing is perfect. And Kung Fu Kenny gets taken down. Now the CTs have given themselves a tiny bit of headway into this game. We're gonna have to see a possible semi eco from the T's here. But it looks like they might just have enough in the bank to drop. The money's coming out. Kung Fu Kenny rolling in that bank. He's printing money. He's got so much in the bank. And 64 tick now. He's going to go aggressive. Love pushing this Ivy connector. Lil Nook in the corner. But are they going to find him? And they dare to trade the kill. Lovely play there. Watching each other's backs there. Lovely bit of teamwork. Kung Fu Kenny now. Balling down Drew Ivy. Out middle. Darkness is going to catch the CT with his back turned. Very, very questionable play there from the CTs. And all of a sudden, this round is going to slip out of their hands. This only avenue back into the map. Hellboy going to go for the spray. Doesn't manage to take him in the first time, but the second time he does. Now he's got to take him out, but Darkness is having none of that. And the head comes off Hellboy's shoulders. 14-6 to the tease. The Falcon even going for that cheeky plant there on the bomb site at the very, very end. Now Kung Fu Kenny and Darkness on the T side, the side they excel at. They're coming alive. They're taking this game by the rip of the shoulders. They're not letting anyone take this away from them. They do not want to go to a third map here. Questionable flashbang from Hellboy. But just in case anyone was looking behind them, they would have been completely flashed. Uh, not something you see very often. Dorney here with the AWP on top of the train. Ball and out of control. Spray down here. Kung Fu Kenny playing this one perfectly. He's very low. That frag grenade might pick him up. Yes, it does. Very unfortunate there. He was trapped in the all-off spot. The Falcon's going to come out here. Try and repeat here. Gets one kill. Yes, he does in Pop Dog. 
Tasky takes down the bomb carrier though. Gonna reload. He's only got one bullet left in the chamber. Darkness finds him, but it's not gonna be enough. Yes, it is. Takes him down with the headshot. The one-on-one -on -one situation here. Darkness doesn't know where the last player is. McDuffie, he's holding the angle. He's playing this passive. He's trying to try catch him off guard. The timing is gonna be so close. Darkness, is he gonna check it? Who's gonna peek first? McDuffie's coming around. He sees him. Yes, takes him down. Not around to the CTs there. The timing on that was absolutely impeccable. McDuffie creeping around the corner there, catches the arm and the leg of Darkness while he's holding that popped off angle. Wasn't quite sure where the CT was gonna come from. He had to take the gamble, and this time it didn't pay off. 14-7 now to the T's. And you can imagine how morally frustrating that is for Dark X and it was the 1v1. He had the rifle versus the Deagle on McDuffie. But it just wasn't enough. The timing was enough to lose them the round. Big flash here coming from the Falcon. He's going to go for the spray through the smoke. Hellboy knowing he's got a fall back. He throws down the Molotov. McDuffie is going to find Dorney there. Trying to sneak up on him from the side. Recipidor. Peeks out wide. Catches Kung Fu Kenny. Is he going to get the next one on the bomb site? No, he's not. The Falcon takes down Hellboy. Nice eagle frag. Potaski catching darkness on the rotate. But Recipidor, he's going to go for the frag again. He's getting up close. He wants these kills. Yes, takes down 64 tick. Knows the bomb is going down. And this should be good night, Irene, for the Falcon. Yes, there we go. Gets taken down by that lovely scout there. The 3k coming in for Recipidor. Beautiful play there. Very, very aggressive. Not afraid to get in the enemy's faces. Knowing that they were all tagged up, especially with those pistols. They've got to get close. They've got to put themselves in danger of the nades, of the frags, of the molotovs. He wanted to get up close. Sasky here, he's calling out the Falcon in the chat. Not something that many men live to play. Ooh, a little bit of trash talk now coming in here. Kung Fu, Kenny, Darkness, both top fragging with 24 frags apiece. Pataski here, he's putting up big numbers for the CT side. Hellboy's going to go for a very ambitious spray. Manages to get Dorney, who's coming up close. That P90 can prove deadly at close range. He gets another one. The headshot's there. Hellboy and the Falcon are going at it. 64 tick though, he's trying to save him. McDuffie comes down, takes down Kung Fu, Kenny. 64 tick going through the smoke with the swing and the knife. Very questionable play there. I'm not sure, quite sure what was going on in the comms. But unfortunately, it looks like the T side, they might have tilted a little here. That is now the third straight round in a row that they're after losing. The longest string of rounds that they've lost so far this game. And you got to question it. Have they started, have the CT started to get under the collar of the T's here? Especially we know how emotional dark Darkness is when he plays. This team in general can be very susceptible to tilting. Especially if things are not going their way. But hopefully now they can snap out of it here. With another full boy. Hellboy's going to stick on his P90. Proved very, very crucial in the last round. Actually won them the round with it. Lil Nox going to get tagged down low. Potaski actually ends up team killing him. But Hellboy picks up the Falcon with the P90. Potaski takes down Darkness. 64 take now. He's got to cover so many different angles here. He's going to nearly shoot his teammate. Whiffs the shot and connector. He's going to whiff again. Doesn't know this player here is in between the two bomb trains. Is he going to peek it in time? No, the timing is not in his favor. Potaski takes him out. Kung Fu Kenny here. Is it going to be enough? Can he hang on to this? Gets one. Going to go through connector. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. This could be it. The Molotov coming out. But Potaski, he's going to read it. He's coming up through Pop Dog. And now it's a game of cat and mouse. Who's going to find two first? Kung Fu Kenny knows he molotov that off, so he has a couple of seconds. But if he exposes himself to this ramp... Oh, it's going to be very close here. Potaski, he's going up onto the upper bomb site. He's got the deagle in hand. Kung Fu Kenny is only one shot away from death. Potaski, though. Did all about timing. Connell finds him. Yes, that's the round. 15-9 to the tees. That's what they needed. They needed that bit of momentum. Very lovely play there from Kung Fu Kenny. He's not afraid to take matters into his own hands. Things got a little bit sketchy. Knives swinging left and right. People getting killed with P90s. Questionable plays all around. But solid as a rock on this map. Kung Fu Kenny was having none of it. 
And now the CTs are up against a huge mountain to climb. They're on match point tournament point. Kung Fu Kenny's playing very aggressive now. Dropping into pop with the Nova though. He gets taken out. Recipitor. Taski's gonna find a kill onto Darkness and all of a sudden everything relies on the Falcon. There's team killing going on left and right. The Falcon coming out pop, but he gets spun around on. My god, the Falcon there should have really picked up that kill on hell by at least a bit of team killing coming in here now as well. Again, I'm not quite sure what this whole team kill strat, team enemy damage strat is. I'm gonna have to research that one a little bit more after the game is over. A lot of pistols here, a lot of CZs getting dropped. It looks like the teams might have a plan in mind. They're not gonna invest fully into this round. Darkness there fancying himself with the Deagle. He is playing very, very well here this map. Carrying Dorney. After Dorney carried him on the last map, it's only fair. But jumping out. No holds barred. Dorney's burning in the fire. He's, one, he's standing in the fire. 64 tick takes out Hellboy with the headshot. Dorney now, he's gonna try catch the rotate. And if he sticks around for long enough, he might get just that. The Falcon, he takes down McDuffie. Now 64 tickets after picking up the AK. Bomb is going to go down. And all of a sudden, we're in a tree on two. 64 ticks got the AK, but Lil Nook, he's going to take down two. We're in a two on two. The CZ duo versus the AWP and the UMP. The bomb is down though. This is in favor of the T's for the moment. Dorney manages to retrieve the M4. Lil Nook takes down the Falcon. Now it's a one on one. Has Dorney got the angle on the bomb site? He hears the bomb is being defused. He just got a peek out. And there we go. Map number two is going to go over to the T side as well. Dorney there wasn't in the game as much as he was last time. But when it counts. He takes down the last man defusing the bomb to win them the game. Bring them into the next round. Absolutely fantastic play there from everyone, especially shout out to Kung Fu Kenny and Darkness. 26 frags apiece. The Falcon coming in with a solid 20 frags. Potaski and Hellboy did as much as they could to keep their team in the game, but it just wasn't enough in the end. And the score ends 16-10. So, we're going to pop back over to the analyst desk. I'm going to hand you over to Cardinal there for the post-match breakdown. Thank you, Cardinal, there for that lovely commentary. We had an absolutely fantastic time here on the analyst desk with nobody and with nobody. Um, we were on the edge of our seats there in some of those rounds. They were very, very close. Absolutely fantastic game there. Um, ending up 16-10 in favor of our boys, the superstars, the legends... And I have to say, it was a really, really solid performance from everyone. Much closer game than it was in game one on Inferno. Train turning out to be a little bit more balanced, a little bit more lopsided as well when it comes to some of the questionable tactics coming in from both sides. But in saying that, it was a decisive victory, 16-10. Some fantastic play there from Kung Fu Kenny from Darkness. Honorable mention to the Falcon as well for dropping 20 frags. Uh, our substitute player that came in, 64 tick, did an immense job as in, that, in that support role with some very aggressive IV pushes. Managed to find a lot of frags and win rounds for his team. But I've got to hand it over to the chat now for the MVP awards. Everybody who's in the chat right now, I want you to vote on that map who your MVP was for the post-match interview. I'll give you just a couple of seconds to get your votes in. And it's going to be a very interesting one now. I'm very curious to see what these players have on their minds after that map. Because there was a lot of moments where it could have gone either way. A lot of very close 1v2, 1v3 situations. A lot of clutches had to be doing. The Falcon. Everybody voting for the Falcon here. Oh, it looks like we've got a very decisive MVP. That's now four votes for the Falcon, guys. I think we are going to have to give... The second ever, the second ever MVP award for the Counter-Strike Silver Elite Highly Offensive Tournament to the Falcon. The Falcon. The man, the myth, the legend, the Falcon. So if we can here, let's have a look. We're going to set up this post-match interview here. He's already in the chat. He's ready to go. We're going to get in touch with the man... The legend, the Falcon. How are you? Good, good. How are you? 
Good. I have to say, congratulations on winning the second ever MVP award there for the Counter-Strike Silver Elite Highly Offensive Tournament. How do you feel after that result? Grand. It was grand. It was a bit easy, you know. Some people are a bit heavier than others, but what can you expect? Everyone I see, yeah. The for the most part. At the end of the lineup there, there was a bit of a disparity between the results uh, on in, in, in your own team, you know. And uh, it was clear that some players were struggling a little bit more than others, I have to say. But at the end of the day, you stepped up, Darkness <laughs> stepped up, Kung Fu Kenny stepped up, and you decided that you weren't going to let this map slip away. So my question for you, for the Falcon, is if you had to bench someone on the team after that performance, who would it be? Um, uh, that 64 to guy, he wasn't pulling his weight like he wasn't interested at all. I see, so you, you feel like his heart is not in the team? No, it's definitely not. Okay, now looking forward, um, I, apologies now if you can't answer this if you're under any uh, non-disclosure agreements, but um, there have been some rumours floating around on HLTV.org about some potential pickups that you guys are looking at for your replacement player. Uh, is there any insight you can give us on that, who you're going to be replacing your fifth with? Definitely not Carpenter. That That's a given. Um, definitely not uh, Liam O'Donovan. Fuck him, too. Um, apart from that, anyone else can play. Anybody else? Now you've heard it here, guys. You've heard it live. Anybody sure. else, as long as your name is not Liam O'Donovan and your name is not Coblington, step right up. The arena is wide open. Gotta bring your A game. Gotta Just bring your A game. Momentum. Exactly, and that's what we saw straight from the Falcon here in that map number two. All the pop up control, all the A bomb side control. Absolutely immense gameplay. So, again, thank you sir and congratulations on your mvp award i hope you're very happy we will get it out to you in the post as soon as is possible and yeah. we will see you in the next match go patriots all right guys well there you've heard it now you've heard it from our second ever mvp that was the falcon uh we managed to get him on the desk he's a very busy man he's always flying left right and center uh as you saw yourself in the server um, but that was our that was our second ever map swift 2-0 victory in that best of three there for our boys in blue the superstars dorney darkness kung fu kenny the falcon shout out special shout out then to cobblington and for 64 tick as well um for their notable appearances as well stepping in as our fifth um, you've heard a little bit of insight there into the uh, turmoil going on at the moment in that team. They're not quite sure who their fifth player in the lineup is. So it'll be definitely worth watching over the next few days and weeks on forums, on Reddit, on Twitter, seeing where these rumors are leading. Um, but other than that, I do want to thank absolutely everyone. I want to thank all the staff, all the casters, all the analysts. I want to thank everybody in the chat tonight for the wonderful support wonderful wonderful support i hope you guys really enjoyed yourselves we had some fantastic counter strike some lovely memorable moments as well um and from everyone here at cardinality tv which is only me because it's only me good night and thank you for tuning in and we will catch you soon on the next counter strike silver elite highly offensive tournament stream thank you and good night <laughs>